Chapter 1, Section 1 1.3, Solving Equations Using the TI-84. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to find the zero root, find intersections, and solve equations all on the TI-84. Approximate solutions of an equation. So this is basically what we're going to do on the calculator. First, we're going to write the equation equal to zero. We're going to go on to the calculator into y equals and put that equation in there. And then we're going to use the zero um, function to determine each x-intercept. You remember we did this in the last lecture, but we're going to use larger equations this time. So let's look at this equation. Use a graphing utility to approximate the real solutions, if any. Round to two decimal places. So we have x to the third minus 5x minus 1. Okay, so here is our calculator, and you see I've put our equation into y equals, and I'm going to click graph. So here's a picture of our graph. What we're looking for are the x-intercepts. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do second calc, calc is in blue. We're going to go down to zero, hit enter, and what we want to do is we want to put our cursor to the left of this first intercept. So I'm going to click my left button here for a couple times. Okay, now I'm on the left side. I'm going to hit enter. Now it wants the right bound. So I'm going to go to the right of it, hit enter, and hit enter. We don't care about the guess. And there we go. So our first one is negative 2.13. Remember, we need to round it to two decimal places. Let's find the second one, this one right here. Once again, we're going to do second, calc, down to zero. And we want to be to the left of it, so I like to get it a little closer than that. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. Now it wants right bound means to the right of this x-intercept, so I'm going to get my cursor to the right of it and just hit enter for guess. And here is our next x-intercept, negative 0 0.20. Now let's find the last one. We're going to find this guy right here. Second calc, 0, and we're going to bring our cursor way over. Looks like it disappeared, but there it is. Enter for the left bound. Enter for the right bound and enter for our guess. And here is our last zero, x equals 2.33. So we just found our solutions. The first one is x equals negative 2.13. x equals negative 0.2, and finally x equals 2.33. Let's try this example. Once again, we're going to use a graphing utility to approximate the real solutions, if any. Um, now we have negative x to the third minus 5 halves x squared plus 7 halves x plus 2. I chose this one because students really freak out when there's a fraction, and there really isn't a reason to freak out. So let me show you. Okay, so once again, I have put the equation into y equals. I do want to point out a couple of things. Whenever I do fractions on this calculator, I always put them in parentheses. It's just a really nice habit to get into. So let's graph it. And here's my standard viewing window. Once again, we want to find where it crosses the x-axis, so let's get started. I'm going to go into calc, zero. Um, I want to find this one way over here first, so we're going to have to go a little ways here. Whoa, probably not that far. Okay, we're going to click enter, right bound enter and enter again. And this zero is at negative 3.36. We're going to find the next one. 
We're going to do exactly the same thing. So hopefully you're getting the hang of it. <clears throat> and left bound enter. Right bound enter and enter again. And our next zero is at negative 0.45. And finally, let's do the last one. over a little bit for our left bound, enter, right bound, enter, and enter again. And our final zero is at 1.32. Remember, we have to round to two decimal places. So what we found was x equals negative 3.36 x equals negative 0.45 and finally x equals 1.32. Now remember these are actually our solutions to this equation. Next I'm going to show you how to solve an equation graphically by using our calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to put each side of the equation the left side into y1, the right side into y2, and then I'm going to show you how to find the intersection. Let's solve the equation using a graphing utility. We want to approximate the answer to two decimal places. So let me show you how to do that. So let's look at this using the calculator. As you see, I put the left side of the equation into y1, the right side of the equation into y2, and you'll notice that I did not distribute. I just put it in exactly as I see it. We don't want to make things any more complicated than we need to. So I'm going to graph it. And I did change my window a little bit so we could see it a little better. Here it is. You don't have to, but it's kind of nice. And now I'm going to find the intersection. So I went into second calc. I'm going to go down to intersect, enter, and it asks for the first curve. And so I'm going to bring this up a little bit so you can see it's on one of my lines. It doesn't matter which one, enter. And then it says the second curve. So I'm going to bring my cursor up just so you can see that it's actually on the second curve. Enter and enter again. And it turns out that our solution is negative 0.2 and y is negative 2.8. We don't care about the y, we just want the x-intersection. And so the solution actually for this um, equation is negative 0.2. So we just found that the solution is negative 0.2. Let's prove it. Let's actually do the algebra here. So remember, I'm going to distribute. So we end up with 4x minus 2 equals, once again, I'm going to distribute negative 6x minus 4. I like to get the x's on the left side, so I'm going to add 6x to both sides. And this should be very familiar to you. 10x minus 2 equals negative 4. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I end up with 10x equals negative 2. Divide by 10. So x equals negative 2 tenths. And remember, that's the same thing as negative 0.2 as a decimal. So let's solve this equation using the calculator again. The square root of z minus 2 equals and so here's the calculator. I went into y equals, I put the left side of the equation into y1, the right side into y2, and you'll notice that I have the square root of x minus 2. The calculator only understands x, y, doesn't understand z's, okay? But that's no problem. We're still going to get the right answer. So I'm going to go right here to graph, and now it graphed it um, using 10, 10, 10, 10, our standard viewing window. And when we look at it, we see that it's going to intersect way over here. So I need to change this window. And I need to change my positive x values to something larger. 
So let's go into the window and let's make it 15. And I'm going to see what that looks like. Okay, now we definitely can see where it's intersecting at. If I really want to be fussy, I can zoom in and see exactly where, but that's not necessary. We're going to click second, calc, down to intersect, enter. And once again, it says first curve, enter, pops to the second curve, enter. And the guess, we're just going to hit enter. And now we see that our solution is going to be 11. So we saw that our solution is 11, but let's just prove that. So we're going to have the square root of z minus 2 equals 3. Now remember, to solve it, we need to square both sides because we need to get rid of that square root. So we have z minus 2 equals 9. 3 squared is 9. We're going to add 2 to both sides to get our z by itself. And z turns out to be 11, which is exactly what we found on the calculator. Okay, you're ready to do the next assignment, 1.3 homework. Um, I really want you to start getting used to using the calculator. The calculator is a fantastic tool and we're going to be using it a lot the rest of the semester.